Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some more ranking, this time with Simic Midrange. We haven't played this deck too much. We've played it just a little bit, uh, probably about a week or two ago now. Um, and we, we did see some success with it before, but the metagames changed quite a bit. There's a lot of Bant Midrange running around these days, which I'm a little worried about that matchup, to be honest. Uh, just, you know, I just don't know how it will really play out. Um, and there's also a lot of mono red. Uh, those are kind of the two most popular decks that I'm that I've been playing against here today as I'm starting the uh, trek back to Mythic. Hey, Frisky Biscuits and Two Nails. Uh, against like the Simic mid range, I could see us going over the top with having this Nissa being able to just add so much mana um, and then being able to play really big Hydro Crasises. Because we do we do start off really well with having four Land War Elf, four Incubation Druid. We can get ahead on mana. And in mid in mid range matchups where there's not a ton of removal, getting ahead on mana is really important. And so that's where um, I'm hoping we do pretty good. Last time we played the deck, we played Kiora instead of Tamio, but I think Tamio is going to be a better card for us, whether it gets back Crasis or something else that we need, or helps dig us for Crasis or something else. Uh, we also have the Bioessence Hydras in this deck, which looks kind of weird. You know, this, at first, I didn't think, like, whenever we did our set review, you know, I didn't really think this was going to be a constructed card. <clears throat> but it's just so big for five mana that it helps us close out games. And I think it's really good against Mono Red because it's just too big for them to handle and has trample. Because uh, the thing that's kind of weird about this card is that second part. It says whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on Planeswalkers you control, that does count that if you just have the Hydra in play and then cast, you know, like a Tamio, for example. See how Tamio has five loyalty? It just immediately puts five counters on the Hydra whenever Tamio enters. Um, and so this thing just gets really big, really out of hand. Sideboard is, you know, just a, some good cards, basically. <clears throat> Got the Ripjaw Raptor in here against red. Um... I'm going to be trying Entrancing Melody and Mass Manipulation against the other mid-range decks to take their things, uh, especially how uh, there's a lot of Planeswalkers around these days. And so that's that's my goal there. And then we got Frilled Mystics and Negates against like Control decks. Get some Counter Magic in here. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. This could go could go good, could go bad. Don't know. Let's, let's give it a try. We're going to play five matches and see how we did. We, we went 3-2. With Dread Horde control. We will not fail. Let's get Nissa. I feel like being Nissa. So the three two moved up moved us moved us up one slot. Oh, I'm trying to talk too fast. Alright, Doom Waffle. Or no, Chief Seth. Chief Seth's the one that's oh, heading out for the night. Sorry. Have a good night, Chief. I should have just grabbed some water right before this. I need some water. Hey, what's up, Abigail? Yeah, Nullhide Ferox does prevent you from playing Planeswalkers unless you pay the extra two, that is. Hello. I have this. Green tea. Kinda just want some water. Yeah, Tithe Taker <clears throat> makes you pay extra. Um I guess I'm keeping the crisis. Gotta wait another turn for that. Never mind, got some water.
Oh, that's good. I will protect the virtue of this world. All right, really good chance that Nissa dies, of course. <clears throat> Hoping she doesn't, because if she doesn't, then this crisis will be super big. All right, well, welcome back, Storm. So the football match is over. Who won? And did you want? Fragile. Did you? Did the team that you want to win, win? Wait, but why wouldn't you? <laughs> Oops. Oops. The land fights for us. Tottenham won literally last second. Game was crazy. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We have the one extra for the blue, but so 12 means X is 10. We should have one floating still. We'll just play this land war elf. Ten tens are pretty big, they're pretty good. Beasts are much more reliable. That can't happen. Ah, not again. Well, my my opponent said oops, so I said oops as well. I wasn't. I wouldn't just have said oops without that. No. I must seek comfort in the land. My Nisa. Okay. Come here. Hmm. I'll just let this Nissa die, I guess. The wilds are my shield. Well, that's a combo right there. <clears throat> Growth Chamber Guardian, Rhythm of the Wild. You no longer. Well, that's not what I want to see, because that, that can just like take out basically all my forests if I want my forest to attack the Vivian. Yeah, that's a good combo right there. So if I play Nissa and Krasis, how big is this Krasis? So one, two, three, four, five. We untap a blue source. And so then we'd have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So we'd have Krasis for nine. And then Vivian could shoot down Krasis and then Phoenixes kill my Nissa. Strange 
magnificent world. Behold, nature's true power. That does get rid of Vivian, though. Phoenix is a really difficult card for me to deal with game one. You can't I basically just can't. Nature. Okay. Well, I guess, are they going to attack all their creatures out to kill Nyssa? Are they just going to let me have Nyssa? Let's see some panic in the streets. I wish you could see your face while I'm beating you. I was kind of expecting them to have a Growth Chamber Guardian fight a Wild Growth Walker there. Doesn't seem like they're concerning themselves too much with killing Nyssa. Hey, Zephyrs. So it looks like they want to minus their Vivian to kill the big Krasis next turn. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I can Krasis for 16. Thank you so much, Holes. Would you like to see what's left of Scala? No one said restoration. Let's do this again. All right, let's get that Vivian out of here. That's sub number six on the day. Getting those hype votes in the chat. I'll be back. Just like that. So before. now I could craze this for eleven. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. 10, 12, 13. I guess it graces for 13. There's 22 flying trample coming at him next turn. We don't really need removal. We can just go over the top and go really, really far over the top. <laughs> like that. Yeah, Nissa Krasis. 
That is, that's a combo there, Hawkeye. That's a combo. Yeah, I could see this deck using a Hadana's Climb, honestly. I believe the Esper Legends list is in their Zephyrs. See, there's one from the last few days. I'm honestly not really too sure what I'm cutting. I guess I'm cutting this Vivian. Because if I if I just cut creatures, then that Vivian's not going to be very good with the minus. So I guess I have to cut it. I do want Bioweth and Hydra. Do I want Tamio? Yeah, Tamio seems okay. I guess I probably don't need this Vivian either, as we saw that game. I mean, if we stabilize, the Vivian's awesome, though. But we're not really going to be minusing and doing too much with the minus. So it's basically playing it for the plus. You're playing They Live Simic? They Live Simic? They live Simic? Or that they live? Why would a deck be called They Live Simic? What does that mean? We already have, like, Tamio and Nissa already blow out the board stall. And, like, mass manipulation that we're bringing in completely breaks the board stall. So, like, I think we're okay. Like, board stalls are where we want to be. I don't. Basically, I don't think we need the extra card to help us in the board stall situation. They live, you sleep, because it awakens the lands and puts them to sleep. Ah. Mm. It's weird getting rid of a crisis. It's also weird getting rid of Anissa. Yeah, the proliferate creature could certainly be pretty good in this deck. There's, you know, basically everything in the deck works well with it. But the problem is, is what is, what would you rather have that proliferate creature instead of, though? We are the many. Wow. That was, that was great getting rid of my wild growth walker. That was pretty great. The only authority that I recognize is chaos. Um. One blue source short from manipulating that Ilrog.
Real nice hand for our opponent here. We'll see if we can come back, but I don't think we're winning this one on the on the play. I'm glad we don't really have Vivian in our deck. It doesn't really seem like we need Vivian still. But getting rid of that wild growth walker was real mean. Come to me. Well, there goes Illarog's coming on back. Come and destroy. Be back after I've licked my wounds. You'll see. All right, that's a good turn for us. So, manipulation. Uh, so, we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can Balance actually manipulate three points. things next turn. So, we would take like Vivian plus Phoenix plus Ilrog. Like, if our opponent just plays Illrog and nothing else here. No one knows the wilds like I do. Man, mass manipulation. That card is cray. That's the biggest of yoinks. Yoink. It's a real big time yoink. Then we get to Alt Vivian. Also, see, I wonder if we just have should have more mass manipulations and less entrancing melody. Entrancing melody is more for like aggro and mass manipulations for mid range. But man, what a backbreaking card that card is! That card's so nice with incubation druid, as we saw there. <laughs> the biggest of yoinks. Yeah, it's one card to take all of them. So, a good start for Simic Midrange. Both of those games looked kind of sketchy at different points, especially that second game. I don't really know why I'm keeping this. I guess I just didn't really want to go to five, but that's five drop, five drop, five drop is rough. All right, well, this, this hand has potential. Draw some lands. Uh, I, I am not sure how Narset's reversal works on mass manipulation, honestly. <laughs> All right, we're doing it. No attacks.
No Conclave Tribunal over there, please. In case we find Breeding Pool. I wouldn't mind getting one land and then having one spell make the Jade Light a 3-2. To be able to block Benelish Marshall if they do Conclave Tribunal, the Wild Growth Walker. Alright, so that's one spell. Two spells. And hoping just to draw the land. And be able to start dropping five drops. So they can either kill Wild Growth Walker or Bio Essence Hydra. They may be more scared of Wild Growth Walker. Which that's what I'm hoping. Good. We trade our Wild Growth and our Jade Light for two Ventilish Marshals. Sounds good to me. Um, let's get another one of these in play. You don't have a fourth Benelish Marshal, right? Nah. That's some stuff. That's some stuff. Let's tear this place up. I'm gonna get rid of one of those. I always survive. You'll see. Yeah, Bio Essence Insider is just huge. Yeah, you know, they might have thought, like, good thing they, well, if they killed Wild Growth Walker, I would have had the Branch Walker, but still, like, these things are 9 nines. Next turn, they're gonna get another 4, four loyalty here. Ugh! What a top deck! Ugh! Could really use that. Hmm. Meet my newest friend. And what a draw that Conclave Tribunal was. I thought we were winning this until then. These things are all going to be like 5 power next turn. I'm 
I just have to take take the cheapest card. Uh, I think I'm just dead. If we had two 1515s, if they didn't draw this Conclave Tribunal, kind? and make them block a bunch, because we could attack with one Vigilant, the other one wouldn't be Vigilant, but still that's 30 where they'd have to put, you know, two creatures in front of just to stay alive, and then we'd still have, like, this blocker scenario situation. Ugh. I mean, new, Vi new Vivian kill Conclave doesn't really help us. Don't they know how attack all works? Definitely thought we were winning, and then double history Benalia, and I was like, oh, that's rough, but I think we still have it. Then the Conclave Tribunal, and it was over. So I definitely want the melodies. Two melodies, the rip draw. I'm gonna take out the two Tamios. Things and one of the Vivians. I'm gonna take out a five mana Vivian. Why wouldn't destroying Conclave help? Because it, it would have taken all of our mana and our land or elf to cast the Vivian to, and destroy their Conclave. We would have had two blockers. Two blockers didn't help against all their creatures. It would have taken all of our resources to play the Vivian. Wish Crushing Can be was a little better in this matchup. I wish it was a little cheaper to destroy enchantments. They're certainly going to have a lot of enchantments here, most likely baffling ends and everything, but I just don't think it's really worth it playing the crushing canopies. I don't think it's like it's not it's not bad. Like I would, it's just not better than anything else that I have basically. I would have two blockers if I played my Vivian. I would have had to tap land or elf. They had like a million attackers, two blockers wasn't going to do anything. It's disappointing. I'd love to have the Nissa to go with the Krasis. But we don't even have a fifth mana right now and we have other expensive spells and that could happen so rewarded for not keeping the Nissa I've lost so much already I won't. <laughs> I've seen puppies whine less than you.
Let me show you what was lost. Go, Branchy, go. Hey, what's up, 619? Baffling ends have certainly held us back. Getting rid of those land war elves. That hurt. Because so we can play our creatures at instant speed, so I didn't need to play Wild Growth Walker yet. Our opponent's really thinking about something. So yeah, I'll still play this walker. There we go. Jade light for the fallen. Uh. That turn went horribly for us. Draw five drop, only find a five drop. With Vivian. Not bad for a mouse. Bleh. So they've had a lot of interaction for us, but as long as they don't have like a Benelish Marshal or something like that to take over we'll be fine. Like, we can handle the stuff that's on the, the battlefield now. They're down to just to two cards. Gravy. Where are some lands? What if I should get aggressive? Yeah. I, I don't think... I No, Krasis for one with the Conclave on this deck would not have been a good choice. It's turning a, a card that's very valuable like a Hydro Krasis into a Vampire token. Worse than a vampire token wouldn't have lifelink.
Yeah, Druid's a mana source, but it's also really slow. I want to just... I want to either have lands or explore creatures. I don't want my very... I don't want to take my entire next turn just to cast a Druid. So I'd rather draw a land. And now we get to cycle a Krasis and gain a life. Krasis for one does not draw a card. Yet to have Krasis for two to draw a card. Yeah, because it, it draws half of whatever X is, and so if you have X, and it's rounds down, so if you have X is 1 and you make it a 1-1, one, one, you don't draw a card, you don't gain a life, you just turn it into a 1-1. One, one. So they're down to three. I could have a 9-9 nine, nine trample next turn. It's an aggressive attack. Every I guess it's a 10-10. I've seen things that would break someone like you. All right, we're going to game three. So they certainly have lots and lots and lots of enchantments. Still don't think we really change anything though. Our opponent having all that removal, while it's not great for us, it at least slows them down a lot because then, you know, they have a less threats and everything. Yeah, the mass manipulation art. Oh, that's a good one. All right, we can have Ripjaw on turn three, potentially, unless our Druid gets Baffling Ended. Definitely a real good start for them. One drop, double one drop. Alright, so I'm just going to Melody the Aspirant this turn. Instead of playing the Incubation Druid. If I try to Melody one of the Dauntless Bodyguards, they can just sack their Bodyguard. That doesn't make a lot of sense, and then Aspirant's even just going to be a better card for us anyway. All one drops. 
Really hoping no Conclave Tribunal. Really hoping no Tribunal, at least this turn. I know Thunderlord it can be upsetting, but d please do not swear. Thanks, KZ. But yeah, they, our opponent has played very slow, but, you know, they've the taken the time that they, you know, they haven't taken too much time or anything like that. Rise, my elemental friend. And it's certainly possible, certainly possible that they have, like, other things going on, you know, that they're trying to do that have, like, come up since they started the match. So I probably want to save Probably want to save the branch walker for a turn. I don't really see the real reason to play a branch walker right now. Maybe I just play it. The reason to save is, of course, um, Wild Growth Walker. Maybe just play it. They'll help us set up our next draw step, which may be our last one. We have five mana still. We get to adapt one of these incubation druids. We technically have six. Alright, well you block there. That one has a Sky Marcher Aspirant. Wait, why didn't I get to... Why didn't I get to do stuff? Why didn't I get to adapt to that? Oh, I only had four mana. Never mind, I did not have five. I had four. That's a... That's a tilt. Miscounted. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Together, we will prevail. Okay, victory.
Nissa just making a whole bunch of three threes. Not bad, not bad. So, yeah, it says I'm betting that the new Vivian's gonna rise in price slowly, then spike post rotation. Cards don't spike post rotation, like immediately. At rotation, every like all standard cards, they're basically all the ones that are played in standard go down at rotation because people that play standard get rid of them, and then they usually. They all go down immediately at rotation. And then they'll gradually increase. And then like six months to a year afterwards, then they could potentially spike. But they're not it's not gonna spike immediately after. Oh wait, I guess you're talking about the first rotation. Right, never mind. Like this one, not like after it rotates from standard. You're talking about this rotation. Right now, where it will still be standard legal. Um Turn two Steel Leaf Champion. That's pretty mean. Okay, so right now, yeah, it's going to... I mean, it really depends on the next Pro Tour. If if that's standard, how much plays it, play it sees there. If it sees like a lot of play, it's going to be spiking. It's going to spike then. That's going to be like the next really big test for the card. My hand would have been a lot better here with a wild growth walker. Ugh. I should have just kept that on top. I just keep that on top at least for one more turn and then ditch it. Then it's a 4 3 that can block the Steel Leaf. Wow. Alright, well, we're going to lose this one. They have exactly three mana with the land of war elf plus like all these awesome spells and they're on the play are about to get we're losing this one i don't rowdy. i don't necessarily hate my game my games two and three so i don't i don't know if they'll be able to repeat that again I want this Vivian, not this Tamio. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if they can repeat that again. I didn't have any of my eight mana creatures to help me to help me uh, play fast. Yeah. So you think it's an eight to ten dollar card? I mean, it is a rare in in a really valuable set. Like it's hard it's hard to have like a ton of eight eight to ten dollar rares with all these like with all these good rares in the set because of how much it'll be opened because of how popular the set is with with a lot of good cards. You know, like if it's in like if it's like in Rivals of Ixalan, it's definitely an eight to ten dollar card. In this set, I don't know, maybe not. Because like the average box price has to go down to like how much a, a box cost at least because otherwise people will just keep on like stores and stuff will just keep on buying boxes and if if it's just always more profitable to sell the cards so there is like a limit to how expensive all the cards in the set can really be while it's like the the number one set right now well it's the set that everybody's buying and opening So 
that there's some downward pressure there. Can we get one more land? Not yet, but it may be worth it just playing the... I think I'm going to play the Druid instead of the Ripjaw. The Ripjaw doesn't do a ton for us because I'm not blocking that Null Hide. But the Druid means that we definitely get to play Hydra next turn. And then Hydra is going to be bigger than... Not next turn, but the turn after Hydra will be bigger than Null Hide. That's a lot of damage. Seek shelter in my stewardship. Behold nature's true power. If they don't attack Nyssa, the Bioessence Hydra will be basically as big as Galta next turn. Be like an 11 11. All right, well, unfortunately, they are attacking Nissa. I'm in need of rest. With it's just another day. Not exactly a whiff. Nope, not exactly a whiff at all. Opponent's deck's working out really well for him. Let's see if you're worthy. The mysteries of life are endless. Back after I've licked my wounds. You'll see. I should have had the force attack them. Red force had vigilance also.
Okay. We're at six. Ugh! Starting Come on. Is the only way. Oof. We're playing all these decks on the the left. We're playing. I'm gonna play like five matches each. Uh, as you see, the first one, Dreadhorde Control, he went 3-2 with. Yes, Dreadhorde Control is up, is uploaded to YouTube. Hit harder. Ooh. That's a nice one. That's a nice one right there. All right, looks like we got this game. So can we get a game three on the draw? I protect that which cannot protect itself. Harness the elements. Have you ever lost a we'll flash in this bio essence Hydra? Which will be instant speed Galta. Yeah, twelve twelve. Okay, nice Ranger, there you go. Put the four explore package uh with Vivian's Arcbow into the Titans deck. I like it, I like it. BioS Insider has been awesome for us. It really has been. Would you mind sending me that deck, Borderland Ranger? You know, post it here in, in chat. Or... Or send it to me on Discord or anything. All right, so the bad news is we don't have any of our 12, sorry, any of our eight mana accelerants. Never mind, now we do. I was gonna say the good news is we had the Wild Earth Walker Jade Light Ranger. Really didn't want to see Land War off from their side. There's three Frilled Mystic in the sideboard. Didn't bring him in here. Hydra Crisis is two, is CMC two for Blast Zone purposes. All right, take this. Boo. 
worked really well with Pelt Collector too. Turn in the corner. Turn in the corner. All right, three and oh. Yeah, the opponent knew about the other Jade Light Ranger, knew they were not going to be able to get through those last points of damage. So uh, Urban Robin Hood, there's a cooldown on people doing exclamation point deck. Somebody did it, you know, five, ten seconds before you. And so there's like a cooldown period on, of it. Yeah, that's the current deck. <laughs> yeah, I Yeah, I like Arcbow. Arcbow Arcbow's really good. I'm I was a little skeptical of just having Arcbow over the other Planeswalkers and stuff at first, but I'm turning into enjoying Arcbow with, like, a lot of decks not being able to answer artifacts, basically, which is why I really like it. This hand isn't spectacular. Hey, what's up, Fried? Thank you so much for that support there, Fried. Fried Jammin. Ooh, Grixis. Ah, it's a Phoenix deck. Hurrah! Huzzah! I pronounced it right. Fried Jammin. Yeah, Arcbow does really protect against flooding. Get to ditch your extra lands. That is definitely true. There you go. Thanks, Chow. Thanks, Brad Jam, and also keeping those hype boats going. Yep, you're doing it real right. Perfectly. All right, coil for the uh, um, incubation druid means we're not going to be doing anything for a while. So that's seven of our 24 lands so far. We put an eighth down to the bottom, so we've seen a third of our lands <laughs> in 10 cards. All right, Jade Light. There you go. We can. See if we have more lands on top. We'll just draw them. Vivian is not so bad. Vivian can give our creatures reach, which is beneficial against Crackling Drakes. I don't love our chances in this game, though. You know, like, I don't... No, Vivian and Nissa are going to be able to pull this one out. But sometimes you just have your mulligan that's four lands, a couple spells, that, and your opponent has a lot better hand.
Nisa. Through this land, we are all connected. I would like to draw a Hydroid Krasis. Rise, my elemental friend. One. Two, I would like my opponent not to make their Crackling Drake six power and kill Nissa. So I want that to happen first. And then second, I want to draw a Hydroid Krasis after that. So, Hinterland Harbor was our worst of our lands. So this is just a deck I haven't played against in a long time. I hadn't seen this deck in a while, and I made it worse by taking out Kral Harpooners. It's not going to be a good matchup for us. Let's try to steal their creatures, I suppose, and have Crushing Canopies. Um, it's like these Planeswalkers just aren't so good Like whenever they get to fly over and kill them. Maybe I just don't play Explore Package in this matchup. It's kind of weird. Thanks, Ranger. The problem with the Frilled Mystic is the 3-2 body isn't very good for the 4 mana. Kind of don't hate Negates. And honestly, Ripjaw, like, all their stuff is damage-based. Ripjaw gets to attack pretty well, and if they try to kill it, it's, like, really hard to kill. What if I don't play... Yeah, maybe maybe not Nyssa. Hmm. So that's 65... Problem is we're just bringing in all sorts of like non-creatures for for these Vivians. Ah, ran out of time. All right, I'm going to just take explore pa explore package out. I don't I don't like taking explore package out, but I don't really see enough cards that I want to take out without it. All right, just got to draw blue mana. And then we're good. A little harder to find blue mana though without the explore creatures. But hopefully we get to draw one. Nope. If I would have drawn the blue mana there, I was gonna just melody the Electromancer and get that out of there. We can get we can add a whole lot of green. I 
I don't like how I cyborged here. I just ran out of time. This didn't go very well for us. That did not go very well for us. Three and one now. War for Phoenix deck brought Sahili and Finale of Devastation. Uh, especially Finale. Or was it Finale of Promise? I don't know. The Red Finale. That card is incredible. That was like the biggest thing. Uh, but then also Sahili as well. Need more time to think about what to do with that cyborg plan against Phoenix. I basically just don't want that match up with this deck at all though. Unfortunately, Wild Growth Walker is just like a dead card against Hero Precinct 1. They just get to chump block it forever. I know my responsibility. Fairy is definitely another card that's made Wild Growth Walker worse. So what do I want over Wild Growth Walker? I guess I just want Melody and Manipulation. Thief of Sandy is going to be a really big problem if they have Thief. Could see playing Frilled Mystic instead of Manipulation. Oh nice, I haven't I haven't started reading the war book yet. Yeah, we could play Canopy to be safe, but it just Canopy just sucks against everything except for exactly Thief of Sandy that they're playing. Like Seraph of the Scales, you don't want a canopy. I just don't like playing a card that that's that bad against everything else. I do like Hydra, because Hydra is really big in tramples. Trample is really important. Hmm. 
We basically just have to get to a lot faster start with our mana creatures and planeswalkers and that kind of stuff. Um, if it's like a slow one for one battle between them and us, that's where we're going to lose. We want to be a lot faster and uh, get a lot get a lot of mana and start playing big crisis and and hydras and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, Duriel, the Bant Midrange is one of the, one of the, if not the most popular deck right now. And Oketra is a big part of that deck. Alright, so definitely love turn one Lanwar Elf. So then we go like Tamio, tick up, look for Nissa. Which means I shouldn't have played the island, should have played the forest for Nissa. Hey, what's up, Atria? Got the Harry's package I ordered on Monday already. Awesome. Yeah, there's Harry's right there. Yeah, we are seven people ordering a Harry's Razor away from know, doing a 12-hour stream. Somewhere. We're getting real close there. That's sub number eight on the day. I have learned all I can here. How it works, so if you would like to help support the stream by getting a Harry's Razor, it's real easy and it's only $3 with free shipping to US, Canada, and UK. How it works is go through my referral link there, get their starter set. We'll do that here. Get their starter set, which comes with a razor, shave cream, travel cover, um, all that jazz is usually $13. If you sign up for a subscription, which means like getting razors every single month, that knocks $5 off of the price. But you can cancel that subscription at any time. So if you if you would like, you can cancel it afterwards. But that will knock $5 off and make it $8 sent to you. And then use coupon code TOTSTEVENSMTG. That knocks another $5 off and then makes it just $3. Uh, like I said, with the free shipping, it's just... That's just a great deal, you know, getting stuff for three dollars. Um, it's really hard, you know, it's hard to get things for that cheap, and it's it's a really good quality razor. So I certainly recommend it. And hope y'all check it out and help support the stream. What would you sideboard against Sultai with Gruel Midrange? gonna be a tough like that's that's like your t that's gonna be like a tough matchup to win you want to just try to be fast i don't i mean just like rem removal i guess you know like lava coils and stuff like that hmm How this thing goes is up to you, pal. Sometimes rest. Ha! I've seen worse. Hostage Shaker seems really good these days. All these people playing Bant. Defeat is a new beginning. Hmm. Yeah. 
Biggest problem is that my opponent knows the mass manipulation is coming. And can't prepare for it. They have Disdainful Stroke, or Veto. By not playing it, we're at least keeping two mana tapped, like, their their whole game. They don't get to use either of those lands. Maybe we should have just kept the Incubation Druid as a 3-5. No. This isn't a fight you can win. Not surprising. Surprising they are willing to play that. I've got time. Surprising they are willing to give me a really big crisis again. That's pretty desperate. It's really desperate because I can just make this crease is so big wow that was an awesome thief hit though Manipul Nissa manipulation plus whatever card they took Do I want to play Negates in this matchup? What would I even take out for Negate? Have to be like... Little Vivian? Have to be like Little Vivian. Little Vivian's minus with 23 creatures. Just not very good to hit. The bit the best thing Little Vivian gets to do is help me block Thief of Sanity. That's really what it does. I got one bio instance Hydra and one little Viv for two negates. It's gonna be a tough game to win. I think we're gonna need like something similar there. Like if basically if they have like turn two thought rage or turn three thief, we're not beating that. I mean, really, just turn three thief. <laughs> Probably be good enough.
Incubation Druid is like our best way to cast Mass Manipulation. But I'm glad it's not Thief. Ranch Walker wouldn't be like so bad here with our opponent only having two lands. I definitely want to be aggressive and keep on getting stuff on the battlefield. I don't really expect them to be Kaya's Wrathing, but you know, that that could be a card that will blow me out. Like I'm not I'm not playing around it. That'll be a card that will blow me out. I'm trying to end the game. Certainly not expecting... Kaiserath now with Deputy. <laughs> yep, selling underwears, toothbrush. We are a full fledged travel agency over here. I think the melody is worse than Nissa if we're going to play something into the counter spell. We have 13 mana. Let's draw five. That'll help things out a little bit.
They have not had the land drops to continue to cast all the spells in their hand. <laughs> we have the high ground. They can't win. <laughs> I think we got this. I think this is going to be a 4 1 for Simic Midrange here. We'll see, though. All right, the first Nissa. All right, you got me. The second Nissa, I won't tap you. Power All right, second Nissa was good. These lands. The land shall conquer you. Well, you can't block there. All right, 4-1. We've moved up. We are two matches away from Diamond now. This deck worked out pretty well, I have to say. You know, I was a little nervous about how little interaction we had, but it honestly worked out really well. You know, we just we were always had more manas than our than our opponent. And that's like the big selling point of this deck is you have a whole lot of mana with the 24 land, 4 land of war, 4 incubation druid, plus you have the branch walker and jade light that help you hit more land drops with that explore package. So you just ha always have a ton of mana. And then, of course, you have Nyssa that just is ridiculous as far as mana as well. So it's just like one of the biggest mana decks. Um, obviously, you have Wilderness Reclamation and stuff like that in the format, but... This is one of the biggest mana decks in the format, and which makes it, you know, probably the best like Hydroid Crisis deck. We were able to cast such huge Hydroid Crisises. Bio Essence Hydra was awesome for us because we played against a ton of creature decks. It's basically all we played against were creature decks for the most part, and Bio Essence Hydras just were really big, trampled over. You know, they were frequently nine nines or bigger because you know, like you just play it. It's a four four. Then you play a Tamio, a Nissa or a Vivian, all of these start with five loyalty. And so it just adds five counters to your bio insider immediately. That was really big. Um, yeah, the, the, our steel spells were awesome in the sideboard melody and, and manipulation, especially manipulation. Dang. We had some, some games like we had a game three against gruel. That was, or no, it was a game two after we won game one, that was looking really bad, but we got to manipulate for three and take a Vivian at seven loyalty an Ilrog and a rekindling Phoenix <laughs> leave them with like nothing but a paradise druid or something like that. It was, it was crazy. Uh, but yeah, manipulation was awesome there. I uh, still feel like the deck is a little rough around the edges. Uh, like that there's, you know, a couple cards that could be tuned in. Like uh, maybe we don't need this Vivian, but this Vivian was honestly pretty good for us. Giving this Hydra uh, a bunch of counters, of course, and then giving it vigilance was really nice for us. Um, didn't get to really do too much cool, too many cool things with Tamio, but I still like Tamio. Um, maybe like negate canopy frilled mystic. We didn't use those cards too much. Uh, maybe like the canopy frilled mystic slots, like those six slots could be uh, better um, distributed among multiple cards. Maybe. Um, but yeah, there we go. Simic mid range. Uh, instead of Ripjaw Raptor, you don't have the just. Uh, I have the Ripjaw Raptor against aggro, so like playing like something else is good against aggro. Uh, you know, something like Thrashing Brontodon, but like basically Ripjaw Raptor is for mono red for the most part because mono red just you know deals a lot of damage and you get to draw cards and it's a really good blocker and everything. That's what Ripjaw Raptor is in here for is for mono red. Uh, Brontodon's pretty good against red also, being a three four for three. Um, you know, you can play something else. Something else that's good against like mono red and maybe mono white also. Whatever you want there. Whatever you like. 
Hadana's climb is probably pretty good here. I don't know where. I guess it would probably go over one of like the three mana Vivians. But yeah, Hadana's climb is probably pretty good here. Um, the problem with Nullhide is we have a lot of Planeswalkers. I don't, but maybe against Model Red, maybe you want to take out some of those bigger Planeswalkers for a Nullhide. I don't know. Uh, if I if you have to replace Lil Vivian and Tamio in the main deck, um, you do want to keep your Planeswalker count kind of high for Bioessence Hydra. So you, you could play Kiora. You could play like two Kiora and then two uh, like Ripjaw Raptors, for example, like some some something that, else that would trigger from Kiora, um, or maybe like just play like a third big Vivian, like third big Vivian, like two Kiora and one other card like a Ripjaw Raptor or something. Maybe get, like, the Melodies in the main deck if you can't play these. Um, maybe get Frilled Mystics in the main. That kind of stuff. All right, that's Simic Midrange. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope you hit the subscribe button over there. But that's it for this video, and I will see you for another one.